Hello class and welcome to lesson 1.6 on equivalent ratios. So the first thing that we have set for us is Andrea spent $2 to make 10 prints from a photo booth. Later, she spent $6 to make 30 prints. So what we need to do is set up our initial ratio, our initial fraction. So our initial fraction is 10 over 2 and 30 over 6. But I want to find out how many prints I get for $1. To go from two to one, we divide by two. So I'm gonna do the same to the top. And I get five. To go from six to one, I divide by six. And I get five. Hey look, these are equivalent fractions. And we also just divided by our greatest common factor. Here, we're gonna set up our initial ratios and simplify 20 over five and 45 over nine. The greatest common factor of 20 and five is five. So it becomes four over one. I divided five by five and got one, divided 20 by five and got four. The greatest common factor between 45 and nine is nine. Nine divided by nine is one. 45 divided by nine is five. So are these equivalent fractions? No, because four over one is not equal to five over one. The same thing here. Three shirts, I'm gonna do it on the top, $21 for three shirts and $35 for five shirts. I wanna find out how much each one shirt costs. So I divide this by three. So I'm gonna divide this by three and I get seven over one. So here I'm gonna divide this by five. I'm gonna divide this by five and I get seven over one. Are these equivalent ratios? Yes. You can also do butterfly math, which is when you multiply like this. So we find out nine times 20 is 180, and five times 45 is 225. Those are not the same number, so these fractions are not equivalent, just like we saw back here. And we see that 45 over nine is bigger, and this proves it, that's the bigger number. Same thing here, we do our little butterfly math. We get 360 and 270, so these are not equal. This sign right here means not equal to. So you've been introduced to that sign, this one which means greater than or equal to, and this one which means less than or equal to. So let's look at this one. Three, th uh, three free throws made out of seven attempts and nine free throws made out of 14 attempts. So sometimes we might not be able to simplify all of these, but let's try. Let's see. So I have three out of seven, and then I have nine out of 14. So we could either do butterfly math, or we could do something else. How do I go from three to nine? How do I go from three to nine, you guys? Lior? Lior? You multiply by three. Perfect, times three. I'm so glad you guys don't say add six. You can't add when we're doing equivalent ratios. It's always multiply. So what happens if I multiplied seven times three? What do I get when I multiply it, Brody? Um, seven times three is three times three is 21. So Jack, are these two equivalent ratios? No. Yeah, they are not, because this is over 14. If they were equivalent, it would need to be over 21. So that's one way we can find it. Again, another way that we could do this one is our butterfly math, if that's easier for you. Nine times seven is 63. Three times 14 is 30, 42, I think. Um, let me see, yes. So we see not equivalent and that one's bigger. So nine free throws out of 14 was better. Here's this one. Selena is comparing the cost of two packages of DVDs. Um, a package of six DVDs costs $90. Oh my God. And a package of three DVDs costs $45. Are these rates equivalent? So I want you to test this. Nick, what are our two initial ratios? It will be 90 and 6. Perfect. And then the second one will be 45 and 3. Perfect. Those are our initial ratios. So now what I want you guys to do is I want you to solve. 
divide by their greatest common factor if possible and try to get it over one. So let's see. So Lennox says the greatest common factor is six and he said it backwards because he solved and he got 90 divided by six is 15. Awesome. Hey Jack, what's the greatest common factor between 45 and three? Three. Perfect. And what do I get when I divide 45 by three? 15. So are these two equivalent fractions? Yes. Yes, they are. So this is how we're solving if they are equivalent fractions. Okay, this is our last one of this trial for this. So Mrs. Jeffries has 12 girls out of 16 students on the student council. The Earth Day committee has four girls out of eight students. Are these ratios equivalent? So Lior, what are our two initial ratios? Um, eight and four. Perfect. And 16 and 12. You know, I'm gonna make it like this. It, I'm gonna make it, even though, ugh, you know what, Never mind. I want it to be like this. I want it to be like that. And then, there's a reason I want it to be like that. While we're not going to be getting the unit rate here, we are going to be simplifying the best that we can. The reason is that this is our part and this is our whole. That's how we write our fractions, part over whole, right? So, let's see. What's the greatest common factor between 12 and 16? Greatest common factor, Nick? I believe that is... Four? Yeah, it's four. 16 divided by four gives me four. 12 divided by four gives me three. What's the greatest common factor between four and eight, Lior? Four. Exactly, it's also four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. Three fourths and one half. Are these equivalent? They are not. And let's say you did not know. Let's say that you were like, well, I can't tell they've got different denominators. This is when we can do our, again, our butterfly math if you are really having a hard time. We get six, we get four. Not equivalent fractions. So not equivalent fractions. Now, Let's look here. 36 t-shirts in three boxes and 60 t-shirts in six boxes, right? So I want you guys to try this and then I'm gonna ask if it's equivalent or not. So I'm gonna set up our initial ratios. 36 out of three and 60 out of six. Those are our initial ratios. I want to find out how much are in one box. I want to find out how much are in one box. And luckily, they are divisible. Look at this, you guys. Of all of you who have answered, you all say no. They are not equivalent. Uh, Nathan, what is this simplified ratio right here? Um, it's 12 over 1. 12 over 1. And what is this simplified ratio over here, Nick? 10 over 1. 10 over 1. 12 is not equal to 10, so those are not equal. Okay, here. 42 flowers in 7 vases or 54 flowers in 9 vases, okay? Next, what are the two initial ratios? So one is, the first one is 42 over 7. And the second? Is 54 over 9. Perfect. So we got to solve them. We got to simplify. I want to see if I can get down to a 1. If I want to see. So, hitting yes or no in the participant section, hitting yes or no, are these equivalent fractions? Yes, they are. So what is here to get from seven to one? I divide by seven. So what is 42 divided by seven, Edson? So we get six. 
Damar, to get from 9 to 1, we divided by 9. What's 54 divided by 9? 54 divided by 9. Yes, it's 6. And that's how we see that these two are indeed equivalent fractions. So, here's what we have right here. So I'm going to set this one up first. C. Marcia made 10 bracelets for 5 friends. So I got 10 bracelets for 5 friends. Jen made 12 bracelets for four friends. Are these rates equivalent? So explain your reasoning. If you have solved it already, tell me, are these rates equivalent? Use the yes or no button. So we got a lot of no's. Let's see, I want to know. Gabriella, what is the ratio for Marcia's bracelets? So she divided by five and what'd you get? I got two over one. Perfect. So she made two bracelets for each one friend. Elias, what is the new ratio, the simplified ratio for 12 over four? So excellent, we divide, or not by two, we have a bigger one that we can do. Nathan, what is it? Four. Four. Their greatest common factor is four. So we get three over one. Are those equivalent? Is two over one the same as three over one? No. So that is not equivalent. Let's look at the other one. Club A raised 168 over 42. Club B raised 152 over 38. So we want to know if these two are equivalent or not. We want to see if they are equivalent or not. What is the simplified version? I know it's big. Did anybody find the simplified version of 168 over 42? Brody? I got 4 over 1. He is correct. Their greatest common factor happened to be 42. If you don't know that, just keep dividing by two, you guys. Just keep going. Um, and then what is the simplified version for 152 over 38 then, Jack? I'm pretty sure it's four over one. Four over one. And he is also correct. So are these equivalent? Yes. Yes, exactly. So these ones are equivalent. Yes. Same thing. 24 over 3 and 52 over 7. So we got to figure out if these are the same or if they are not the same. What's the greatest common factor between 24 and 3? What's the greatest common factor? Show me on your fingers. I want to see it on your fingers, you guys. Yeah, for those of you holding your fingers up, it's 3. So I divide 3 by 3 and I get 1. When I divide 24 by 3 on your fingers, guys, what do I get? 24 by 3, we get? Yes, 8. 52 and 7. What's the greatest common factor between 52 and 7? Show me on your fingers. Huh. They don't have one, do they? No. I see you guys all confused. They don't have a greatest common factor. So this is one we might wanna use. We can't do anything, seven's prime. So now we've got eight over one and 52 over seven. Let's do our, our butterfly math. 52 times one is 52. What is eight times seven? Who can tell me what eight times seven is? Eight. Let's see, I want Alina. 56. Perfect, 56. So are these equal? No. So no, those are not equal. What about this one? I know it has it in your book. So there are 27 bites in three servings, and there are 45 bites in five servings. So I'm going to set up my ratio, 27 over 3, and my other one is 45 over 5. On your fingers, what's the greatest common factor between 27 and 3? 
Yeah, for those of you who are doing it, we get three. 27 divided by three, show me on your fingers. Yes, for those of you who keep participating, I love it, nine. 45 and five, what's the greatest common factor between these ones? Yes, it's five. And on your fingers, 45 divided by five is? Yes! So our, oops, why did I write five at the bottom? I'm being silly. So are these equivalent fractions? Yes! These are their equivalent ratios. What about this? Micah can do 75 push-ups in three minutes. Eduardo can do 130 push-ups in five minutes. Are these rates equivalent? So our initial is 75 over three and 130 over five. Based on what we can guess, we're gonna assume what's the greatest common factor between three and 75, who can tell me? Yeah, show me on your fingers. Yeah, it's three, excellent for those who are showing. Okay, let's see, Anna Jolene, what is 75 divided by three? Antonio, what is 75 divided by three? I think it's 25. Yeah, it's 25. So, as I still wrote a three on the bottom because I'm being silly. So I get this, 25 over one. This 130 and five, it ends in a zero, so we already know that they share a greatest common factor of five. So, let's see, Lior, can you tell me what 130 divided into five groups is? Um, 130, you can't do that. Six? Alina says yes, 26. Are these equivalent? No. So those are not equal. Here's this last one. A human adult takes about 16 breaths in 60 seconds. A puppy takes about eight breaths in 15 seconds. Are these rates equivalent? Now, just so you know, there's the other way we can do it too. So we're first gonna do the equivalent fraction way and then I'm gonna show you another way. Same as what we did before with ratio tables. Our initial one is, I'm gonna put it 60 over 16 because I wanna find out when, how many seconds it takes them to take one breath. And I'm gonna put 15 over eight. What's the greatest common factor between 60 and 16? What's the greatest common factor between 60 and 16? Let's see, Harry? I just forgot to put my hand down. But yes, they are both divisible by four. What you do to one side, you do to the other. What you do to the top, you do to the bottom. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. 16 divided by four is four. What is 60? divided by four. Who can tell me 60 divided by four? Go ahead again. I want you to do it, Root. 15. 15. Excellent. Hey, Damar, do eight and 15 share any common factors together? Yeah, he's shaking his head. No, they don't. So a human breathes, it takes 15 seconds for four breaths. A puppy takes 15 seconds for eight breaths. Are these equivalent? No. So we didn't even have to get down. We can't simplify more than that. The other way to go about doing that is with our ratio table where we're gonna make, funny enough, only one hop. So here we have an adult takes 60 seconds for 16 breaths. It's 15 seconds for eight breaths. How do I go from 60 to 15? What did I do again to get from 60 to 15, Brody? Four. Perfect, I divided by four and I got 15. Yes, but wait, what happens when I divided 16 by four? I got four, not eight. So there are those two ways that you can go about doing that. You can either do it with the uh, simplifying fractions. You could do it with ratio tables. And if you were even so inclined, you could do it with butterfly math. The great part about math is there are so many different ways to do things. So your homework is page 63 and it is just problems number 
One, two, and four. One, two, and four. So like I said, the homework is page 63, numbers one, two, four, and if you want a challenge, do seven, but like I say, I suggest you do all of them to help get the practice needed. I suggest you do all of them. Let's look at number six on page 63. So, Jade enlarged the photograph at the right to a poster. The size of the poster is 60 inches by 100 inches. So now I'm gonna write 60 by 100. Is the ratio of the poster's length and width equivalent with the ratio of the photograph's length and width? So this sounds tricky, but does anybody have a guess of what they think we might do? Does anybody have a guess of what they think that we might do? Lennox, what's the first thing we do? I was gonna say something about the last question. Jack, how do I set this first problem up? What do I set it up as? Well, well, I I feel like I'm, can I, I kind of, I, I kind of did it a different way. Go ahead. Um, well, at first I thought, can um, three be multiplied by anything to get to 60? Yes, by 20. And then, and then I wondered if five could be multiplied by anything to get 100. Same, by 20. Ah. And then, so I knew that it could be fit in. I know you probably did nope. it a different he way, is complete, that was just... He is completely... So Jack chose to do it the multiplication way. Totally, totally cool. That was really, really smart. Here's the other way. 3 over 5 and 60 over 100. I want to simplify. 3 fifths. Can I make 3 fifths any smaller? No. It's the smallest it can get. They're both prime numbers. I can't get it any smaller. 60 hundredths. First thing I can do, they end in zero. I'm just gonna cross off those last zeros. That makes your life way easier. So I'm crossing off those last zeros and I now get a six over 10. Can I make those smaller? Yes, I can. They're both even, so they're divisible by two. Six divided by two is three. 10 divided by two is five. Hey, three fifths and three fifths. So you could either do it where Jack was thinking, okay, can three be multiplied to this? Okay, can five be multiplied to this? Are those the same number? That's one way to do it. The other way is divide, get them the most simplified, and that's it. They're the same method, just the inverse. So Jack did excellent. We see everybody here did excellent. All of your thumbs up. You guys are doing great.